And that's why I'm not interested in talking about facts. I don't talk about facts. I what the hell did I just say? I'm not interested in discussing facts. That is a very bizarre and wacky thing for me to say, especially coming from somebody who spends a ton of time and hosts an entire show that's premise is evidence-based herpeticulture or evidence-based husbandry. Now, why did I say that and where did it come from? Well, that clip is, and we will watch the full clip shortly, is from the Trap Talk Reptile Podcast with MJ. I was on there last week with MJ and Dave, and we actually had a really enjoyable conversation. And I actually, this video is mainly to hopefully get some of you who probably maybe didn't see that over there to watch the full conversation because I think it was a it was an interesting conversation. It wasn't really a debate. It was very fluid, and I think it was one of those few times where the breeding side and the people who are sort of more on the pet keeping side were able to have a humane conversation without it devolving into well, name calling and drama. So I think it was very successful. And I'm not really going to rehash any of that conversation here, but I did want to play this clip, which included me talking about how I don't find facts interesting. And uh, I want to get into that deeper because I think it is a really important point. And I think I will admit the way I described it in the podcast, when I re-listened to it, I'm like, why did I say it that way? It didn't come off. Uh, it, it it came off confusing and I'm surprised there's already not clips floating out there of people just saying that Dylan doesn't care about facts because I didn't explain it well enough and it was clumsy. But it is a really important piece of the puzzle when it comes to herpeticulture. So we're going to play the clip now and then I'll explain a little bit after. I think the agenda that I push, if we can call it an agenda, is simply progression of care. And, and like you said, there's always a better way to do that. And I think, as you mentioned, the it's the, the rack is a very breeder a breeder specific tool that is the breeder tool people don't keep ball pythons and rack as pets yeah. that's just not the case i agree and, and i think that they're they're for a, a while and this could be from you know quote unquote my side pushing back too hard on the breeders saying you know attacking doing this ad hominem attack and i but i do but i do see that from you know the advancing side the this quote unquote advancing side which I, you can take or leave that what that means but i think that pushed breeders into trying to convince people that the rack was the pinnacle of care and what that did was eliminated that economical side to keeping racks to using racks which we've already admitted is the case and there's potentially ways to improve that but if we say that is the pinnacle of care then we're done improving that we're actually saying the rack is perfect there's absolutely zero need to uh, make any adjustments ever, which is also to say that we know exactly what a ball python needs and what they need to survive and have long-term health, which I don't think anybody here in this conversation would would say. Nobody's going to say, I know exactly what a ball python means. And that's why I'm not interested in talking about facts. I don't talk about facts. I talk about the philosophy of keeping. I don't talk about how to care for an animal. I talk about how you should think about caring for your animal. And I can tell people who are watching that there are some incredible ball python studies going on as we speak that are you know, going to extract some of the data that we've been talking about tonight. That's not in my wheelhouse. I'm sure I'll report on it with the podcast. But it's more about understanding that if we commit to something being 100% perfect, we're fucking done. You know, you don't move from that point. That's right. it. But, you know, life's all about evolving, so we should never be settled or complacent, I, I feel like. And and like you said, there was things that we said tonight that just came off the top of our heads that you had no influence on. We just thought naturally or instantly, like, what, what can be better about a rack? Obviously, lighting, first and foremost. It'd be cool to give things a little bit of light. Light does bring happiness. Um, so, but, I mean, I'm not going to argue. I mean, I have ball pythons in a rack because I breed ball pythons. Other than that... I wouldn't have them in Iraq. So there's the clip. And I think at the time of having that conversation, I think myself, both Dave, MJ, and the folks who are in the live chat completely missed the fact that I said I'm not interested in facts. And when I re-listened to it, I thought, what the hell? Why did I say that? Why did I phrase it that way? But I spent some time trying to re get myself back into the mindset of that you know, blurb. And I remember why I said it. And I think it's a really, really important point. So the point that I was making there is that the philosophy, so the values that you have that guide your reptile keeping are the foundation. That is the very first step you must take in the reptile room. And we talk about that all the time. And for me, and the thing that I always talk about, promote always, is that progression of care. So I don't care if you start with a plain small tub with a water dish. I think your goal should always be to slowly, as you have the time and the money and the energy, to slowly improve your care so you can get to a point where the animal has a higher state of welfare. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't think that journey ever stops. I think that will always be a continuous path. There are always going to be new things we learn about just 
the, the reptiles in general or their environments or how to care for them in captivity that will allow that to be a never-ending journey, which I think is one of the best parts about the reptile hobby. So the point that I was making about, quote, not being interested in facts is that the facts don't supersede the 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 philosophy, the values of your care. So for me, the values are improving, using nature as a guide, always trying to take steps towards natural replication. I think that's the way we should be progressing. And if you have that as a foundation, then the facts get layered on on top of that. You use the facts to guide your care. But if you don't start with the value structure, if I don't come down here and, and decide and commit to progressing towards natural replication, then the facts are don't always enter this room, right? You could, so that might sound confusing, but just imagine that my value at the bottom was to make money, right? If my, if my value at the bottom was to just make money, then the facts about wild natural history aren't going to enter this room because there's no need for them here. So I'm going to miss them. So that is the point I'm trying to make. I mean, you could come up with a bunch of different values that would allow you to miss the natural history information or that that information that's going to allow you to push towards a higher level of welfare, whether it be money related, maybe it's social media related. You want to be famous on social media. So you want to be a pet tuber with 45 you know, animals in your basement and you're actually not spending any time studying those animals. Instead, you're just trying to garner a following. That might be your foundation. Your foundation might be trying to create or find a new morph or maybe do a hybrid or, you know, there's a million different things you could come up, come up with where the facts won't matter or won't ever enter your room. So that is the point of the conversation that, or that is the point I was attempting to make, which I was very clumsy with. And, but you know, going back to it, I think it's worth doing another video on this one just to really drive that home that the, the, the philosophy and the values are first. You have to start with that. And that's why the facts weren't mattering in that part of the conversation because the point I was trying to get across is that we should all be stepping towards or we should all be progressing our care. And I, in my opinion, that's my values. And I really do think that should be the values of most reptile keepers. Of course, there are going to be breeders who are focused on money or people, you know, there might be other reasons that are other reasons that are very valid that aren't progressing your care. But I think most people, I don't, I want to, don't want to put a percentage of it, but the majority of people should be in the camp of wanting to do better for their animals or, or progress towards that wild replication. So I want to keep this video quite short. Again, the really the point of this video is to send you over to that conversation. Go check out Trap Talk Reptile Podcast with MJ. You can check out the conversation there and check out the other epi- or interviews that he has on the channel as well. I think that would be great. But again, I think a really important question is asking yourself what values you have in your reptile room. What values guide your care? What values guide your actions while caring for captive reptiles? And I th- some of you might not have thought about it before, so you don't actually know. And I think it does simplify things. If you come up with a solid structure, then the next steps become very obvious. For me, it's very clear that I should stay on top of the data the natural natural history data for the animals that I have in this room. I don't necessarily have the natural history data for green iguanas, for example, because I don't keep those and I never will. But for these ones, you know, I try to keep my finger on the pulse with that. And it's because of the value structure that I start with. So that framework is so important. And that's why I said facts don't matter. It's not that they don't matter. It's that they're not the initial piece. Because if you don't have a foundation, you will not utilize those facts to increase the welfare of the animals that you keep.